and to pray. To protect her privacy, Sandy has asked that the media not use her last name. For me, it was a, a, a terrible struggle because what I was going through was what is happening? Why am I hearing a voice? Why am I seeing things that aren't there? Um, I was ready to seek professional help. Sandy claims a statue of the Virgin came to life and spoke to her as she prayed. I started going there every day, and then over a period of time, oh, I'd say a month or so, I had three dreams of the Blessed Mother. While I was going there every day then, after the three dreams, then she started to appear through the statue. Her face was oval-shaped, brown hair, brown eyes, high cheekbones, um, hollow through the cheek area. Um, her, her expressions were very loving, very compassionate, um, slow speaking. It just made you melt. Sandy spoke to Father Leroy Smith. I'm pretty convinced that something is happening there, that Our Lady does appear because I, I believe the, in Sandy. I know her very well. I know that she's not trying to dupe anybody as far as her own personal life is concerned. Uh, and I really feel that she's uh, uh, sincere in what she says. I'm sure that many of these claims that people make are sincere, honest, heartfelt. At the same time, many of them are clearly not miracles. Paranormal investigator Joe Nickel recounts the findings in his book, Looking for a Miracle. If there are miracles working in certain ways, there are often attendant benefits, very specific things. For example, uh, the Shroud of Turin would prove that Jesus existed, uh, rose from the dead, etc. If it were genuine, it might prove those things. Or some other miracle might prove that the Virgin Mary is personally watching over your life and guiding you. And these give comfort to people. The Blessed Mother has said to me repeatedly, watch for the signs as the signs continue to unfold. Since August of 1993, on the 8th of each month in Falmouth, Kentucky, thousands of people gather in the hope that they will see a vision of the Virgin Mary. Sandy's visions of Mary have inspired thousands of pilgrims to Falmouth. This water source wasn't here, and in March of 93, I received a message from the Blessed Mother requesting a chapel to be built right here on, on, on this hill in place of the barn. And she said next to the chapel, special waters would become available that would bring about many spiritual and physical healings. On May the 7th, she told me that these waters that she spoke of would be brought about through her and not through the efforts of mankind. At that time, there was, was no source of water on this hill. One week later, I noticed a puddle here. It had some tadpoles in it. At that time, I didn't realize that this possibly would be the source of water she spoke of. From that point on, we had 22 days of no rain, 90 plus degree temperatures, and baking hot sun. The water should have disappeared, but this never did happen. And to this day, this water has never disappeared. But then the water did disappear. And in September 1993, six months after the water mysteriously disappeared, Sandy received another message. What the Blessed Mother told me in this message was for me to go to the farm in Falmouth on the eighth day of every month starting in January to bring all those with me who wish to pray to pray the rosary there and to offer it up for the peace of mankind and conversion of sinners. She never once said she was going to appear. Residents in the Falmouth area who also claim to have witnessed miracles share their photos with one another. This is uh, August 31st at St. Joe's in Cold Springs and this is Our Lady's first appearance out there. And this is Mary over the water tower. 
This is uh, Mary, also August 31st, 92, on the bell tower. There's usually a cross there, and instead Mary's on the top of it. This is the Blessed Mother when she dripped out of the sun during her apparition at Falmouth. There's one. If you look straight into the camera, into the aperture of the camera, you can actually see that golden door shape. And in fact, the length and width ratio is exactly the same as that in the golden door pictures. Usually when people uh, give me a photograph uh, and they see this, that, and the other thing, I don't see it personally. But still in all, whether these are just cloud formations or what, but it happens so often that it, it, it would seem that, uh, uh, that there is some substance to some of the pictures that they get. The statue of the Virgin Mary is not blinking. It looks superficially like it's blinking. But when you look at the eyelids, the sculpted eyelids, they never move. And the illusion that the eyelids are moving happens only, and this is done repeatedly in the segment, only when the camera comes in too close in its focus. And it creates an illusion, but it, what it does is it creates a double image. If a person believes in what is going on, it's not because of me. It's because they themselves are being touched either by Our Lady or Our Lord. Father Smith conducts a service at Falmouth. We have come to pray, to pray for Our Lady's intentions. And in a very recent message from Our Lady, she has told us to pray as we have never prayed before. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The vision I received today was very similar to what I usually see um, every month. Um, last month she did bring a little different vision along with her with a globe and an outline of our country. But this month she just appeared first through the statue. There was a miss. I know people that have come to places like this and they take pictures and they take videos and even though they don't see anything, things show up on their pictures and videos. And that's odd, you know. You try not to have any expectations about seeing anything because most people don't see anything and that way you won't be disappointed. But you should come with the intention of praying and honoring Mary and that's the reason why I came. Many of the people who are visionaries turn out to be what we call fantasy-prone personalities. A vision of, 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 of the Virgin Mary or any other, I guess, you know, religious figure is very real to the people who see it. It's not real to people who don't. I'm not sure what more we can say. <laughs> to say that the Virgin Mary is really standing out there would be a lot stronger if we took a person who didn't believe in the Virgin Mary and they saw it too. But that doesn't happen. I called my book, Looking for a Miracle, and I have to say, after years of investigating, I'm still looking for a miracle. I truly feel in my heart that I am telling the truth. I'm not a fanatical person. I mean, others may think so, but I don't feel I am. I feel I lead a very well-balanced life, and I've been taught to tell the truth. I'd find it extremely difficult to lie. There would be no reason for me to make up such a thing. I didn't need this in my life. We all have beliefs about various things. Beliefs have, scientists have beliefs that the world is consistent and, and, and observable and, and that sort of thing. And, um, and people who want to have beliefs that there's a, a God that exists, I think as long as the belief can engender a person who is a better person, who contributes to society, who helps those who are suffering and in need. There's nothing wrong with that. Though skeptics continue to discount the evidence for miracles, 
For the thousands who gathered at Falmouth, the evidence is undeniable. Angels are as real as we are. There's no question that angels, like everything else, exists. 